No, we get a big go stack. We'll fix your techie woes, and we'll break things, and we'll make things, and we're all together raking, and we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bilge tank. In the big bilge tank, come and join our pirate crew. In the big bilge tank, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it, and we'll tell the world about it, and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to Bilge Tank episode 69. I'm here with Sandy and Paul. Hi. And I'm Kat. Hello. Cool. That's what we're doing today, Kat. Um, I'm here today to talk about edumacation. And I've been told I'm not allowed to swear, so I'm going to try and be very, very well behaved. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> um, so the first thing we're going to do today is that Paul is going to learn how to do some programming. Right. Yes, it's Hour of Code this week, isn't it? It is. It um, is Computer Science Education Week, as it's now titled. Right. CISO. <laughs> Good old CISO. That well-known week of yeah. code. Um, cool. So we thought we'd do some nice basic things like putting a Raspberry Pi together. Yeah. So what we have here is we have a Raspberry Pi. We've already built the Pi Bow and put a heat sink on it. And I'm going to try putting a blinked on it and then plugging all the cables in live on air. Yeah, it's actually Sandy's pie. Yeah. We, we stole it. Banana for scale. Banana for scale. Yeah, in our new starter kits, you will get this very natty sheet of stickers. You haven't got stickers yet. There you go. I haven't. Yay, you label stickers. your pie. So, we've got the pie. We'll start off. I'm going to put the SD card in. So if I'm holding the pie like this, the little contacts go that way. And they just slide in the back there. Or you can throw it on the floor. <laughs> just slide off really well. There you go. I've got it. I've got it. Cut. Okay. Yay! Fine. I'd be more careful this time. <laughs> my sausage fingers. There all we go. Of, all of this is in our um, getting started guide that's going to be in our new Raspberry Pi 3 complete starter kit. Yeah. Um, I've already stolen one of them. It's really good. Yeah, it's so good. detailed and nice and easy to follow. You go to take, take it back to PyTop HQ and just yeah. learn. Drop it <laughs> on the table. Okay, so I've got my USB keyboard. I, I've got my own keyboard here, which I actually stole from John. Um, it's one of our favourite old school Dell keyboards <laughs> that we've been using since the late 90s, I think. John bought a batch of them from eBay, just so he didn't run out ever. <laughs> um, I've got that the wrong way up, so I'm going to put the mouse in the right way up now. That's helpful. And then I just need to put the HDMI in. Could you do that, Sandy? Yep. Can you and we already have a power supply here. Um, and then I'm just going to bring that up into the corner there. And we've got the tutorial in the book, but if you wanted to do this online, you can go to our website there. Oop, there we go, it's booting. And uh, we've got things. And this is version 2, so it has Pixel. So wait for it, wait for it. Magic. Hey! Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Yay! <laughs> Welcome to Pixel. We have success. Cool. <laughs> Let me just see if it's right. <laughs> I've just seen what Les has put on there and he's made me giggle. Oh. I've forgotten to put the blink on. How does how's the blink go on, Sandy? Um, so the important thing about the blink is that it's got, um, yeah, let's get it on the, where is it? There. Cool. So the blink has, um, the important thing about the blink is you have to have it plugged in the correct way up. Um, now we've designed it in such a way that nothing bad will happen if you plug it in the other way up. But the way to tell if it's the correct way up is if you hold your Raspberry Pi, with the Raspberry logo the correct way up on it facing you um, and then you get your blinked and you look at the the blinked writing on the blinked then that should also be the right way up. Cool. Um, there's also rounded corners at the top. Um, they match the rounded corners of like a Pi Zero okay. or one yeah. corner of the Raspberry so the Pi. Yeah. writing sort of reads towards the USB. So yeah. then... Go on, put, put the Pi in frame. Um, put it on the wrong way first, just to show that nothing explodes. Okay, so far. <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> and then you've got to take it off again. <laughs> nice. Oh, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's fine. So, the desktop's still there? Okay, pop it yeah. off and put it on the right way. Right, okay. Yeah, it's always so fun when you put something on wrong and the whole pie shuts down and you just want to crush Yeah, it. shorting pins is not the best idea. One way that it could go wrong is if you have it like slid along slightly. If you had it slid along by one pin, then that probably wouldn't be great. But, but that's nigh on impossible to do with a coupe around it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Nice plug there, smooth. There we go. You like how I just slid that in there? <laughs> okay, so I've plugged that in. Right, okay, what do I do now? 
We're going to go back to the web page. Mm, too many nieces. There we go. Okay, blinks. Right. Installing the software. Uh, is that mouse working? It's the wrong, wrong mouse, I think. No, no, no. We had it. multiple mice earlier. Oh, no, no, because I'm looking at this screen here. <laughs> <laughs> screen. Too many screens. I'm technical, me. <laughs> oh dear. There's right. only what, like six screens or something like that. Yeah. Like that. So, <coughs> uh, to, to make this less confusing, I'm going to bring the tutorial up on the Pi, which now means I need to use a third mouse. <laughs> do you want uh, me to control the. If, if, I do, if I do this. Yeah, if you talk, talk through what we're doing here yeah. while I'm trying to achieve it so on the Pi. Yeah. So, Learn. so, so essentially, the, the steps are basically, um, you know, swip, beat your Pi up with the SD card in it. Uh, once it's booted up, um, the next step is to install the Blinked Python library. Um, pretty much all of our boards that we sell have Python libraries, um, and all of them can be installed with our, we've got a one-line installer, um, which is exactly what it says. It's one line of code that you type in the terminal. Um, it will kind of prompt you a few times to type either Y for yes or N for no. Um, and then it should just all be installed. If it has to reboot, then it will do that automatically. It will say, do you want to reboot now? Um, so you'll see that Paul's, um, it just prompted Paul to say, do you want to continue? And he pressed Y to continue. Um, cool. I'm sure Checking I'm going to regret this. asking this, but what does curl mean? Um, so curl is a... Because <laughs> it just makes me think of blonde curly hair or something. <laughs> it's, it's a command line program that is used for um, sending HTTP requests, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, so you can use it either to like download files or to... Um, so in this case, it's downloading a file from get.pimroni.com slash blinked. Okay. And it's passing that to bash. So the, yep. the vertical line symbol is called the pipe symbol. Um, and that's a way in the terminal of passing information between different programs. Um, okay, so it doesn't get confused by different. So that that's downloading um, a Bash script from get.pimroni.com, and it's passing it to Bash, and then it's running it, and that's what's actually installing it. So it's yeah. installing Python and Python three. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I love some of the words you see when it's installing. Like numpy. NumPy, yeah. yes. NumPy is awesome. Uh, NumPy is a, um, a Python mm. library for doing kind of numerical operations, so like math stuff. Oh. Um, it's, it's really useful. Oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I, I just read it like NumPty, as in yeah, a yeah. bit of a wally. Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably deliberate. <laughs> cool. OK, I've done that bit. Open a new terminal and type pseudo Python. We don't do typing here. We cut, we pay. I think John must be in the chat, and he's uh, he's got the proper um, <laughs> the, the proper definition for curl. Um, oh, okay, yeah. I've got I've got that's a Python. Because Leslie Ah, C U R L. Ah, that's clever. Mm. <laughs> okay, so I've got two windows here. I've got the browser here, the set picture function. So from linked import set underscore pixel. I'm going to set underscore brightness. And anyone can type this fast, it's fine. So what, what Paul's doing here is um, basically a Python library is a collection of um, normally functions and it may have like things like classes and um, various things like that as well. Um, and to, to use a library you have to either imp import the whole library and then run the bits of the library that you want from that, or you can actually kind of cherry pick bits out of the library by typing from whatever the library name is, import a, so fu a function. I can do from blink, I normally would do like from blinked import star, mm. yeah. but then I would have to type blink That's dot set pixel, blink dot this. No, if, if, if you did from blinked import star, then what that would do would be that we'd import everything. Okay. Um, so star is basically just a wildcard character for ins um, importing okay. everything. If you did import blinked, th you would then have to do blinked dot set brightness or blinked dot set pixel. Okay. Because you've imported the library itself. Um, okay. So, so we've okay. Yeah. 
the reason that we do from link to import X, Y, Z is it's more efficient yeah. um, because you have to import less stuff, um, essentially. Okay. Show. Yep. Sure. So, yeah. Hey! Shiny. Yay, so let's... Uh, there we go, that, that's, that's a bit of coding. That's barely... That can't have taken more than 12 minutes because it's 12 minutes past three and we always start on time. Yeah. So if you if you do that again, Paul, but this time do set pixel zero comma two five five comma zero comma zero. So I did up there to go to the previous commands I've done in Python. So the first time Paul did two five five two five five two five five, and that's an RGB color value. Um, so um, the range of those colors is from zero to two five five, with two five five being kind of fully saturated. Uh, um, right, it's, kind of, here. it's really hard to see on this camera. It is red, I the, promise. The, the, colour, closer. the colour of it. Um, we, we're blue tacked to the table. <laughs> no, we've got zoom. Oh, oh nice. Look at that. De defocused. So oh, one of the things that's coming up as a problem in education at the moment is that a lot of early Python is just copying and pasting code. Yeah. So it's really important if you're using something like this in the classroom that you encourage children to try playing with different colours um, I've used this with year six, so the 10, 11 year olds um, using the unicorn hat or the sense hat, just saying, let's play with different coloured numbers and see what happens. I think the first time we had a sense hat, when it was back when they first ran the Astro Pie competition, the children I was teaching just loved scrolling a message and changing the numbers each time to see what different colours came about. And it's actually quite useful because they're learning about how variables work and how you can alter them and things like that, but it's not enclosed, you, they can do whatever they want. Mm. Okay, I've set some pixels now. I'm happy I've done some code. So I'm, I'm learning from your code based on what's happening that the, num the very first of those four numbers is the position of the pixel, am I right? That's correct, yes. Yeah, so the set pixel method takes um, the first thing that you pass to it is the pixel number, which is yep. from zero to seven. Yeah. Uh, because in Python, things are numbered from zero um, so the first, the first item is zero, mm -hmm. the second one is one. Um, and then the other three values are the RGB color. Yep. Uh, Ooh, shinies. So it, it's the same as our <coughs> unicorn hat. Yep. Um, so unicorn hat has an eight, an eight by eight uh, grid of LEDs. Um, and the set pixel method for unicorn hat takes an X, Y cord on it. Yeah. Um, okay. It's a nice simple thing. We could you could easily make traffic lights out of it. I'm well, really sad that you can't really see the colours on the screen because oh, yeah. they're so pretty right if now. I, if I hold my hand like that, can I use my see. piece of paper? I yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah. I spelled white while as white. Oh, I can't get. Oh, there. If, if you hold it over the top, then it should kind of diffuse through the paper. Oh, my bit of paper's got those writing on. Let's <laughs> tear off the my random scratching. Let me give you that bit. Make, more sensible. Let's make a diffuser for it. Oh, that's clever. There we go. That's oh, oh, we had it. There we go. Pretty colours. Set pixel. So I'm doing the loop now. Five. White's true. I quite like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it clicks back on that. So I, I corrected my <coughs> error. And now it's happy. So what, what Paul's doing now is uh, two different types of loop that are there are two different types of loop in Python. One is a while loop that essentially runs um, providing that a condition's met. Um, if you do while true, then essentially it'll just run forever until you tell it to stop. There it goes. Um, the second type of loop is a for loop, and that's kind of like for an item in a list or something along those lines, or for a number in a range. Um, so that'll, if you say for i in range 8, like Paul's this is, done there. This is something that Python does well, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, this is probably one of the hardest concepts to learn when you're learning to code in Python is about loops and about the, the kind of syntax that they use. Um, yeah. Because I think it's just not the way that the human brain works. Um, I think we kind of tend to not really think about how we actually do a process, whereas when you're when you're programming or coding, you really have to think about exactly how you break that process down into all of the different steps. Okay, um, so I, I press Control C there to stop that. Um, what is it called where I type in stuff and it just happens? Is it the interpreter? 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's a name for this, isn't it? Where you are read, ex read. I guess it's, it's interactive coding. Um, yeah, but it's like a read, copy, execute something. They call it. What's yeah. it what do they call it, cat? It's education. You must know. My brain's got completely blank right okay, now. Okay, fine. But, um, we'll work it out. John will probably put it in chat. Yeah, we'll keep it. But there's a type of thing like, uh, I'm going to exit now, which I think is like that. Fine. At least it tells you. It knows what I want, but it refuses to do it until I do it right. Yeah, REPL, that's less. REPL, less is, there we less go. Got the yeah. Which is like, like, write, execute, program language. Read, execute. <laughs> Read, execute, print, lol. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> I like that version. So, so if I wanted to do this, there. If I wanted to do this in a way that wasn't REPL, because REPL is like where you just do stuff like that. Under Pixel, you have like all of these things, and what you actually want is Python three idle. Mm -hmm. So idle is kind of like a combination of um, the. So I've got the REPL there if I want. Yeah. So, so it's got the REPL, but it's also allows you to do exactly what Paul's just done and open a new script. And then type your code in there, and then save it, and then run Absolutely it. Windows. So I could like copy all my stuff from here and drop it into that file. Everyone should see REPL now in the comments. Yeah. Yeah. REPL, REPL, REPL. So one of the REPL. interesting things when you just opened up that idle window. Yeah. Obviously, the way we've been working is in that very first the REPL window. Mm -hmm. One of the problems I found working with children is that they don't understand how important it is to open a new window if you want to save the code. So I once had one of the children I used to teach, Isabella, wrote pages of Python code for of Python for uh, Minecraft, and it didn't run and it didn't save because she'd done it in the wrong window and she was so upset. Yeah. When I was um, in my last job um, working at University of York, we did um, kind of like introductory Python courses, um, and when we did them, um, as part of the course, we said to people to use Idle and to open a new window yeah. and save all of your code. But you always got the people that didn't do it that way. They just typed the code straight in, yeah. and inevitably they would like they would have like a twenty-five line program, and they would have typed like all of this code and spent ages doing it. And like maybe in the third line, they had a they had a syntax error. Yeah. And of course, when they get to the final bit, that you know triggers the code to run, yeah. and it it gives a syntax error. Then they've got to go back and like go through all of those lines and run them all again and it's, it's so kind of like if you're playing about then use idle or use the REPL um, yeah. on the command Ooh, line shinies. but um, you know once, you, once you've done that for a bit then definitely write all of your code down um, before you actually run it it's uh, yeah, it's, it's saves you a lot of heartache I think when you're teaching at a basic level you do just need to say Let's not even worry about that window for now. Let's just always start a fresh window. Let's make everything happy and safe. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> That's like my favourite fade of colours. <laughs> I've just like, put random maths in here. So yeah, so what Paul's done here is it's the same thing that he was running before when it's scanning across all of the pixels, but he's um, changing the RGB value as it goes across. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't even need the stuff at the top, apart from the set brightness and maybe the clear. That, that, that is dead code. That code is so dead to me. Cool. With your set pixel there. Yeah. The first one's 255 minus. <laughs> I times 32. I've got okay. I in the loop. Yeah. And I worked out that 255 divided by 8 was not 64 and not 16, therefore it was 32. <laughs> there, if I wanted to jump through all the values, I could do I times 32. Okay. And it would never be more than 255. So it would go through colours like that. Okay. All right, so just put red backwards by subtracting it from two five five, which is the maximum value. Oh. And then the other two I just put as working the way up. So if I, I could do like two five five minus i times thirty two there, and it would just change the order in which the hue is. I think. Yeah. The green value is now RG. The blue value is now doing weird things. Mm. Um, in fact, I don't, yeah. I was, you know, I don't want red today. I'm not having any red in this. You can have real fun no if you use, um, if you import the math library and then you do math dot sign, and then give it the give it the pixel number, then that does <laughs> that does fun import things. math. Yeah. What am I doing? If if you do like math dot sign times i, um, math then you'll dot sign. Do I need brackets or brackets with i with i inside? 
Uh, yeah. Do I need to times it by 255? <coughs> You'll have to um, add add 2. So if you do plus 2, and then if you do um, times 128. Okay. Try that. <laughs> so the whole thing times 128. Yeah. Try that. See what that does. It looks very similar to me. It's it's actually it's very subtle, but it's um, it's actually going from blue to green that time. Um, okay. So essentially, what it's doing is it's um, so it, it's creating a sine wave that goes across the pixels. And um, so a sine wave looks like uh, like that, basically. It's like a bell shaped. What if I put math time yeah. sign in the sleep? <laughs> that yeah, that that's going to take a while. <laughs> um, maybe if I it's too slow. If I divide by one hundred. Oh yeah, squaring that's going to yeah that's oh. that's a oh. bit too fast. Okay. So that ten. Yeah. Because. So you can see it starts off slowly and then it speeds up towards the end. And cool. that's because it's kind of r it's, r it's ramping up. Um. <laughs> There's loads okay. of things in the so chat right. now for suggestions for what we should, could try using. Yeah, so I've started by cutting pasting code that somebody else has done, but then I've started yeah. playing with little bits of it to yeah. find out what breaks. Yeah, and that's so important. So the best way to learn how to code is just by yeah. playing. Um, you know. Find well, something good that works. Learn the basics and then kind of go mad with it. And mm. just, uh, cool. You know, you're not going to break anything. No, no. And it's, it's so. my big thing at the moment is saying to educators that it's really important that we are learning through having fun and doing activities rather yeah. than and making here's mistakes. a skill. Yeah. yeah. It's I mean it's so boring sitting in a lesson and being told here's a skill we're going to learn it by rote. La 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 la. It should be here's a skill. Uh, no no here's a fun project. By the way you've yeah. just learned a cool skill. Um, it, the okay, learning is almost accidental. If you got like a class of twenty people, how how do you do that though? If you have no time, I think you have to assume that the children are going to be at different levels because everybody learns differently. Everybody learns at a different pace. Everyone has different interests. You can't assume that all twenty eight, thirty children are going to be at the same point at the same time. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing about programming is it's the type of thing where you can say, well, actually, you're doing really well. Why don't you be my helper for the next lesson and help the person who's struggling over here? We can be buddies for the lesson, okay. or who wants to be the debugger this lesson, okay. um, and things like that. And it because doesn't matter. Because bugger. So. Yeah. <laughs> You're oh. the debugger. <laughs> I'll keep saying the D at the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, where are the like make with the resources? Where do people start looking for? Where do teachers? Where do educators? I've got loads of notes here because I'm cool. cool. <laughs> Let's put these on the close up. Oh man. Do spot, we, spot the teacher. Do we have to look at my really really sad? Cool. It's, it's, uh, it's the section in the middle I think we started off with. <laughs> <coughs> we can like wander around your mind map. Yeah, this is me making notes about people I need to mention, things I want to talk about. Cool. Um, so in terms of resources, if you're teaching at primary level, Hour of Code and Code Club are absolutely wonderful. You've got really great project-based resources there that are easy to work through. We've got links to Hour of Code, we've got links to Raspberry Pi which should lead to yeah. Code Club, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So they're below the YouTube video. Uh, really exciting project, just been relaunched, is the Asterix Pi competition. Okay, that's now gone like Europe wide, worldwide? Yep, Europe wide with the new okay. French astronaut that I can never pronounce the name of, oh. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, there's, I'm trying to think where to go next now, my list. Crumble uh, is a yep. really good project, project based resource. It's just a small board that you program from your computer, mm -hmm. but you can build a robot. So, for example, Nick Hughes, um, one of the big amazing community member, really good friend. Um, he did a project with some children where they did a DT bit where they built the chass chassis of their robot and then they programmed it and it was all crumble based. So they got to do like the DT skills but on yeah. something other than the clock. And then they learned things like how to loop because obviously you're going to be controlling your robot to go around a maze or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like the turtle robots that we yeah. had when we were kids but kind of like but you also build it yourself. Well, so it just, makes yeah. it that bit more exciting and you know if you want to make it pink you can make it pink if you want to make it black you can it's your choice your color it's, yeah. it's, you know, it's your choice so a bit of creativity but also yeah. not a clock um and it's i'm very big on the not making clocks in detail yes yes yeah. oh clocks oh. <laughs> we made a nice scraper did you that's yeah. that's a, that's, that's a well at least fun it was useful more. yeah it was useful yeah I made a clock for my GCSE project, let's not talk about that. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, one of the things we've been doing at PyTop is building PyTop Coder. Yep. And the idea of that is ready-made resources in a coding environment. So you've got instruction window, code window, output window. Okay, we looked um, at that on the kind of yeah. PyTop um, next doc laptop. special laptop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Them, them things. Yeah. Um, and. The idea behind that is that you'll be able to create your own resources or download resources. That's going to be quite useful when we've got a bit further down the line. That should be next year, early next year. That'll be ready it's to go. It's got games on it as well, isn't it? We've got Seed Universe yeah. game, which again should teach programming through learning. That's so much fun. Mm -hmm. Phil and I just sat in Bill Street, just kind of played about with it. It's have great. you seen our Code Week, Educa Education Science Week, whatever it is, special game? Have not. We have got a game at the moment. <laughs> Sorry, PyTop moment. Um, and it's just, you know, the little drone robot games where you have to steer yeah. it. It's Santa's helper and you have to steer him around the living room <laughs> to get to the Christmas tree. And if you get beyond level four, you're entered in the competition. I think right. Yeah. I can't remember. And I'm gonna get it's the one. challenge to get Santa on the bandwagon. <laughs> no, it's just to get your little elf around. Okay. Because it's all about elf help. Yeah. Elf, elf guided guide learning. Yeah. Elf and safety. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting to see the elf on the shelf here. Where is he hiding? <laughs> yes, while we were having lunch in the PUB, my, my suggestion was it could be Science Education Week, Coding Object Oriented Languages. So cool. Fine, you didn't laugh then either. No. Anyway, yeah. Anyway. Moving on <laughs> rapidly. Um, so, yeah, so there's loads of resources available on the internet. Uh, another good site is CAS, the Computing at School website. But it can be quite overwhelming if you don't know what you're looking for. Um, same with with, T with TES, Times Educational Supplement. Lots of helpful teachers uploading their resources, but sometimes <coughs> they're quite confusing. So below we've got a link to CAS resources, and if you look on the left of that, there is a filter, so you can at least cut down on what you see and make it more relevant to what you're trying to teach, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. That'll, that'll do for... Pie top rocks. Pie top rocks. <laughs> 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 Um, I mean, other things that you can do as a teacher to get more involved is attend lots of cool events. So obviously, Pi Academy. Yep. We've, I'm sure that's been talked about <coughs> lots. Pi Academy is awesome. I love Pi Academy. I've been four times now. Only the first time as an attendee. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> then you got ropes into it. Yeah. Then yeah. I got ropes dragged. No, I love it. And they've just launched. The foundation have just launched. Kind of. Uh, the so online. Online CPD. CPD. Yeah. CPD continuing professional development for teachers usually. Yeah. Um, I know there was some confusion about that the really? other day. Yeah, someone did, a few people didn't know what it meant and thought it was like teach class, teaching workshops and things. Um, mm. Yeah, but Pi Academy is not like normal no, CPD. No, Pi Academy is not like normal CPD. I always make this confession. I quite often fall asleep in CPD. Um, I don't know why. I just tend to nap. Yeah. Uh, Pi Academy, I stayed awake for the entire two days and was excitable for it throughout. So yeah. that's a big difference for me. Um, there's loads of community events going on, like Horsham have got their Raspberry Jam on Sunday um, and they've got so much going on down in Horsham, it's sort of this crazed tech hub down there. Yep. Um, you mentioned MozFest, didn't you? Yeah, so you've got MozFest, MozFest and PyCon, PyCon education events. They're, yeah. they're not just about Mozilla, they're not no. just about Python as such, are they? They're, they're kind of big kind of community get-togethers where yeah. mm. everyone comes out of it with like knowledge spilling out of yeah. their ears. Uh, MozFest this year in particular was incredible. There were 10, 11 and 12 year olds running workshops for adults. Cool. Um, just so wonderful to see those kids getting up there and sharing their knowledge and being so excited about it. Yeah. Um, you, you had some shout outs, didn't you, for the workshop runners? Yes. Uh, so MozFest, it was Elise, Avine, sorry I can't say your name properly, Avine, um, and Joshua were wonderful. Cool. Just can't fault so, them. So that's all about code. Yeah. Josh. Yeah. 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 So, um, and the two girls, you, you honestly couldn't fault their confidence levels. Did you see the mugs that Josh made I for us? I did, I did. Sandy's is <laughs> the best. Cool. Why are you, you not like using your mug, Sandy? <laughs> Do you not like Josh? Oh, like you not appreciate his contribution? People. The reason that I'm not using it is because I just burst out laughing whenever I see it. It's, I need to look at it properly now. It just, like, whenever I look at it, it just makes me so happy. And <laughs> <laughs> your desk is now just it's a fantastic. sea of coffee yeah. from when you've just loaded it out. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, teachery events. Some teachers out there will know of BET, which is a big education trade fair. Um, that's in London at the end of January. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be there, so if you do fancy popping along, see me in the Steam Village. And in America, ISTE, which is in Texas, and apparently I'm going to that too. So Sweet. Huzzah. Yeah. Have you been travelling much? 
Not yet. Um, I had my few weeks in Glasgow, so you can see Keith there, who had to put up with me for two days as a Pi Academy trainee. Yep. Um, so a bit, bit of Glasgow. I know I'm going to Malvern, which should be fun because it's quite a pretty mm -hmm. part of the world. Um, what was on the top left of the sheet, Sandy? Oh, what else? Oh, have I got? top left. Uh, top, oh yeah. Top right. Top right. Oh. Top right. And coding <laughs> evening. Yeah, coding evening. Yes. This is like your thing. You, yes. You've like made this famous. Yeah, these are people yeah. I've got to mention. Yeah. I, I've got so many people who are incredible who help me out with things like coding evening, and I always forget to mention them. So I've written them written down. So I try and remember some of them. So I've got Mark Grossman, who is a super code club person. Mm -hmm. um, Nick Hughes, who I've already mentioned, who's incredible. Richard, who I know is watching. Um, who does Code Dojo and Code Clubs and incredible things. Um, I, I can't not mention Katie Parnell, who came to my coding evening as a complete novice and she said, you know, this is all too much for me, but I want to try and learn something for my children. She yep. works with pupils with learning difficulty in Richmond upon Thames College. Yep. Um, and to see her journey in the last year, so she's gone from, I can't do any of this, but I want to have a go, to organising Code Dojos and learning how to use an Arduino and all these things and she yep. sort of said my grown-up children are proud of me I'm so proud of myself <laughs> everything's amazing and she's just an inspiration because she's it's like what was I ever why did I never start yeah. this what was stopping me um, and I just feel like she has to be mentioned because I'm so proud of her because good. she just came along to this evening in the pub to have a go um yeah good so, lots of things to mention <laughs> right so is there anything else we've missed any questions um, I don't think so. I guess we've got um, quite a lot of tutorials that try to, so like when I write tutorials, especially the getting started guides that we have for our different products, the way that I try to do it is just kind of teach you all of the, the basics of how how you do stuff with it and then have like a, some kind of pro, like fun project that you do. So with the blinked one, it's um, making a rainbow animation um, and then kind of at the end of it, kind of encouraging people to do other stuff with it, you know, to kind yeah. of like take it further. Um, so if you look at learn.pimeroni.com, then we've got all of our tutorials there um, that kind of link into our products. Um, so, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, yeah. So it's, it's really important with projects that there is, you know, here's some learning, but here's something you can do independently and just have a play. Yeah. Um, so it's nice that you just got that opportunity. Sweet. Yep. Right. Thank you very much for coming down and doing, yeah, very enjoyable show. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. really exciting and fun to be here. Cool. Um, we'll see you, I think, next week for business as usual. But we'll look slightly more harried from all the Christmas orders. Um, I think, yeah, next week we have the launch now. The secret thing. Got so uh, maybe, uh, secret so maybe like a Tuesday build stuff. Yeah, that, that could mm -hmm. happen. We'll could see. Happen. Yep. Yeah, we don't want to, we don't want to try it too much because people get disappointed when we keep pushing things back. Anyway, yep. yeah, have a good weekend and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. Bye. <laughs> bye. bye. bye.